this video, we continue talking about combinatorics and we learn about permutations. So first, what's a permutation? Well, think about starting with n distinct objects. And we want to arrange them. Each arrangement or ordering of these n objects is called a permutation. Now, if we only want to choose some of the objects and then arrange them, then we can call this a permutation of length k. So imagine we have n objects and we want to select k of them and order those k things. So it will be important that k is less than or equal to n because we can't have an ordering of more uh, objects than we started with. So each arrangement is a permutation of length k. All right, so a couple notes about permutations here. So first of all, if we have n objects, then we can make n factorial permutations. Second note is if we start with n objects, the number of permutations of length k that is possible is, we write it n capital P k, so n permute k. So what this is equal to is n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 times all the way through to n minus k plus 1. Or if we want to write that more um, succinctly, we can say n factorial divided by n minus k factorial. All right, so how can we think about this? Well, we will use the, uh, use the multiplication rule. So if we are choosing k things out of the n, well, when we start at the very first slot here, we have n different ones to choose from because we haven't arranged any of them yet. So we have n different ones we can choose from, so in other words, there's n options here. Now, we've placed one, and we have n minus 1 things left. Then that means that there are n minus 1 different choices we could make to put in the second slot. So that's how we get this n minus 1. Similarly, when we get to the third slot, there are n minus 2 objects left, so we have n minus 2 options. And then finally, when we get to this last, or in other words, case spot, then we have n minus k plus 1 different options. So that's our little proof and intuition for why this is true. So now that we know the definition of permutation and know a couple properties about it, let's calculate some probabilities, or actually calculate some um, permutations. So we're going to calculate some permutations. Um, so in this first example, imagine that you have 100 records, and you can put three of them on a special display in your dorm room. So you have a left spot, a center spot, and then a right spot. How many different displays are possible? Well, this is a ordering sort of problem, so we're going to use permutations. We have n equals 100 different records, and then we have k of them, or k equals 3, that we're going to be selecting and then ordering. So this is 100 permute 3, which we know is equal to 100 times 99 times 98. And again, we can think about it as if we start at the left, we have 100 options, 100 different records we could choose. In the center spot, we have 99 records because we've already placed one. And then once we get to the rightmost spot, we've already put two down, so that leaves 98 records to choose from. So that's how we get 98 for the last one. All right, next example. Imagine that I have two students who cheat together on exams. So imagine that I try to prevent this by using assigned seating. Um, imagine that they have 28 classmates. So in other words, there's the two cheaters, the 28 non-cheaters, giving a total of 30, cheater, uh, 30 students. Now imagine I have a very funny classroom. All the students just sit in one long row. Um, how many different seating arrangements would place the two cheaters together? All right, so first, the way that I think about this problem is uh, figure out where the non-cheaters are going to go. So if this is the classroom, here's the left side of the classroom, here's the right side of the classroom, we'll have a bunch of desks here, and then I will put them into those desks. Um, when I get to this, uh, over on the left side, here's um, student one, or like spot one, furthest left, uh, and then next to it, there's the next student, and then the next student, and then the next student. Okay, so for this spot, there are 28 options, 28 of these non-cheaters. So since I haven't placed any of the students yet, here in this first one, we have 28 options. Then we have 27, 26, 
25, blah, 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 all the way until we get to the very last spot. There's only one non-cheater left, so there's only one option here. Okay, so now we have placed the non-cheaters, and we can go and figure out how many places could we put the cheaters. Well, we could put the cheaters over on the very left side of the classroom. We could put the cheaters between the leftmost student and the second to leftmost student. We could put them between the second student and the third student. We could put them between the third student and the fourth student, and so on. Keep going between the 25th and 26th, 26th and 27th, 27th and 28th, or we could put them on the far right side of the classroom, on the right side of the 28th student. So if we count up that number of spots, then we get 29 different options. So there's 29 different places that we could put this clump of two cheaters. And now, once we've figured that out, we can arrange the two cheaters. So do we want cheater one on the left, or do we want cheater one on the right? So there's two ways to arrange them. Um, so we have just two options for who goes on the left and who goes on the right. So now we can put this all together with our multiplication rule. We have 29 ways to arrange the cheaters. We have 28 factorial different ways to arrange the non-cheaters. And then we have two ways of deciding who goes on the left side, who goes on the right side. And so that gives us a product of 29 times 28 factorial times 2. And that's how many seating arrangements would place the cheaters together.